Blog Talk Radio. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Star Trek Thursday. I am Matt Marrero and I am here along with... I am Damon John of the Ferengi. Well... I like gold. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> See ya. Goodbye, everyone. It's been a great time. John, you're never invited on the show again. Take care. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, <laughs> So anyway, so we are those guys, and we are talking about Star Trek The Next Generation, episode I'm not sure anymore, and and not because of the content, but because I'm still, I'm going to, this is going to be like a weekly thing, or whenever we do this thing, I'm still confused as to whether or not the pilot is two episodes or one episode. I don't know. I think it's it's kind of a, is is cereal a soup, is a hot dog a sandwich kind of debate, where it depends. I I think for production purposes... I do think that the pilot is counted as two episodes. All right. Either way, we're talking about the Ferengi conundrum. That's the name of this episode now. What was the actual name of the episode? The Outpost? The Last last Outpost. Cool. Anyway, so, John, in your professional opinion, because you've been a fan of Star Trek much longer, uh, this TNG is particular, much longer than I have. In your professional opinion, what the fuck... Okay, so yeah, they might have gone too far in a few places. Um, uh, the idea, a few. <laughs> the idea with this was okay. So the Klingons are our friends now. The Romulans haven't been seen or heard from in in some six decades. So they say we need a new villain for TNG. We need TNG's also, answer to the. Also, to, the to be fair, they also to be fair they claim that this shouldn't be based off of uh, off of you know TOS like just piggybacking off of it. So we have to make, even though so far they've done several plots from TOS, just reworked, but still, either way, they want to make their own thing. So I respect them for saying, let's create something new, but go on. Yeah, yeah. so that, and that, that in and of itself, of course, you know, that makes sense. So they sat down around a table and they said, okay, what, let's come up with something real scary, a truly, a, an, oh, an adversary man. that truly pushes the envelope. Oh, man. And, and Gene Roddenberry said, capitalists. <laughs> what did he say? What did he whisper? Capitalists. It is, it, capitalists. Okay. I, I, that sounds like, I, I mean, I've heard some stories. Maybe he would say that. But I'm, no, because here's the thing, right? For me, I think it's just, it's, it's just, there was, okay. So it's like, I'm, th- I'm thinking of it maybe with like a, a football analogy, right? So someone fumbles the ball. Right. And then another person goes, I have a chainsaw. Let me rev it up. And then he just starts killing people on the field. And then for some reason, the police are just not present. For some reason, maybe there was like a small fight outside and it was just like, send all of the cops around the arena to this small fight. So all in all, it was started with one fumble and it just kind of escalated to a chainsaw fight on the field. I've been watching too much Evil Dead recently, John. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, you know what it is. I, I think, and and I don't mean to lay I don't mean to lay the blame too squarely on Gene because Gene. All jokes aside, Gene Roddenberry at this point was not doing super great. Uh, his hmm. physical and his mental health were not were not as spectacular. And Gene yeah, Roddenberry yeah. was kind of a weird kind of a weird guy in, in the best of times. <laughs> So you, John's only mentioning this because I recently discovered this looking at some, looking, I, I saw, I heard some stories, but John had never mentioned this to me before until I sent him a tweet and he was like, yeah, all Gene. And I'm like, why is this not shocking to you? <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was an inter- an interesting guy to, to say it charitably. Um, but uh-huh. yeah, so he came up with this idea. The idea was for, for like Yankee trader type, almost like, I guess, like privateers in space. When and, I think um, of Yankee he, traders, I think of the Ferengi. Yes, yes. But but um, what when it, but then he, but then like I said, I, I think a lot of it. There were a lot of checks that that uh, you know could have there there could have been chances for things to to have come out a little bit better. But he was really you know, he was getting really wrapped up in it. And, and this episode gave rise to one of my favorite pieces of Star Trek trivia at all time. And feel free mm-hmm. to feel free to censor this as need be. Gene Roddenberry, as they're designing this new alien race is getting way too detailed into their sexual organs and the things that they do with them. 
until Yo. somebody finally he was getting into like Ferengi sex positions until finally somebody cooler heads prevailed and somebody was like Gene this is going to be on primetime TV families are going to be watching let's chill Gene's response families are going to be watching let's make a few come on let's have them make a few on TV come on and sex makes babies so that's why <laughs> so that as you can see yeah so it's yeah, weird weird stuff was happening behind the scenes. Um, Gene Rodbury yeah. wasn't involved for for much longer after this. It, that halfway through season one is where he kind of took a he, he stepped back from the day to day. Yeah. So my thing is this, right? I before we even get to their appearance in the show, I just think that it's way too early to bring in a brand new race of aliens and have them cold war the place up. That needs to be something that happens once the series is established and you know who these people are and that's why you're at a standstill. I feel like it's weird to meet at a standstill where there's – I mean, yes, eventually in the episode they did have some action a la TOS. But still, initially in the episode as I'm watching it, it feels like they're trying to do this Cold War standoff. And I'm kind of sitting here like I don't know who these fucking people are. So why is it a big deal? Now, to be fair – they did foreshadow them. They were mef- referenced in the pilot. So because their name is so odd to me, I think they chose a good name, actually. Some people might not, might not find it intimidating, but it really does stick with you because I saw it in the pilot or heard it in the pilot. Then hearing it now, I'm like, oh, that's the same people that were built up as these ferocious assholes. And so – but the thing is, is that you want to see them – do you want to see them in general? So I was wondering at some point with most of the episode taking place on the ship without even seeing them, just random communications ish until we saw their faces. I thought it was just a save the budget episode because we've been talking about the fact that the budget has been uh, slowly running out from the looks well, of this, it. At, uh, this, at this, at this, I mean, it's, that really what they were doing is like I said, they, they made a lot of use, especially early on, of the Planet Hell uh, soundstage, which, which is what they called that uh, mm-hmm. the soundstage that that and a lot of other episodes had their their scenes filmed on. That that like paper mache set look was was very like I said, of course, very TOS. But uh, now they were still early enough around the the budget was you know it was a season one budget. Um, it consistent with the rest of the show, so they had you know they had sound stages, they had they had some you know weird like Ghostbustery special effects with the energy whips yeah. and stuff. Um, I actually so like that. It wasn't, that. It was, it wasn't like a bottle. It wasn't definitely wasn't a bottle show. Bottle show, uh, which is what they call that. That is when they try, try to save money by uh, shooting everything entirely on existing sets. So usually with Star Trek, what that what that turns into is uh, all the scenes are set aboard the ship or uh, mm. or otherwise on on sets that they already have. Yeah, you said this wasn't a bottle show. No. No, because it had other, you know, they they made new sets for it, with the you know oh. the crystals and stuff like that. They they were oh, cheesy okay. looking that's... as hell and looked like looked like something out of an '80s horror movie. But there you go. Okay, no, that's fair. Well, but they were on the ship most of this episode, though. Like it feels like this episode and the last episode, they were trying really hard not to go too crazy with certain types of effects. At least at certain, like you saw the outfits in Code of Honor. And then in this case, and also most of it being on the ship, and then you see this episode where obviously a large chunk of it was on the ship, and then when it wasn't, it was the soundstage. So I don't know. I feel as if, look, I know someone's going to laugh at me, be like, are you telling me Star Trek isn't about saving money? But it is. But in this case, it just felt very much like they blew their entire budget on Worf and the Ferengi. And they were like, fuck, yeah. what do we do? It, it was it was cheesy. It really, like I said, it had, it had a distinctive, for lack of a better word, I like to call it the troll, the, the troll 2 factor, where it was a little, oh, bit, uh, a little bit cheesy. That's, and and also, perfect. as far as like not ste- not stepping out of TOS's shadow, there's I don't know if you and, and on your other series have done uh, the episode Arena, um, but it's a very similar thing, as you have the... The Enterprise and, a, and an alien threat are both, uh, you know, being held prisoner by a by a, a higher life form. And oh, right, yeah, to... and the, yes, exactly. We haven't done it yet, but I've seen it. Yeah, we. It clearly, it's so funny. Again, they're trying to step out of the shadow, and yet somehow they're always being tractor beamed back in. Yeah, and, and let's face it. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of Star Trek tropes that that every series, you know, from from Deep Space Nine and on to Voyager. Voyager was a very trope heavy. Uh, uh, series that it's you know n- none of them truly stepped out of the shadow. In, I mean, 
which is to say, no, they did, but they did go back to a lot of the, you know, the, a lot of the old formulas. Um, you know, that's you know, fine. And it, it, I, it won't be the last yeah. time it happens on on TNG either. No, no, no. I have look. There's nothing wrong with having series staples. I mean, as a guy who you know watched Power Rangers as a kid and currently watches like Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, Godzilla, staples are staples. I totally get that. But when in the marketing, you guys are like, you know, oh my God, we're gonna we're gonna make it. It's gonna be so, totally different, guys. Don't think about TOS, TNG, TNG all the way. Hooray, TNG! And you're watching TNG and you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> four episodes in, you're like, wait a minute. Okay, <laughs> hold but Patrick- on. Patrick Stewart didn't get the memo and said, "My name is William Shatner." Shit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I just, theory. I'm just basically saying, like, yeah, it just feels. Also, in this episode, was it just me or did uh, did um, Picard seem a little off? Yeah, he was honestly. The, the the characters were written very strange in this in this episode, and they're already acting kind of strange because it is early season one, and they're still finding their footing with the characters. But yeah, yeah, the the, the writing. I think they were trying to make it punchy, but everyone was acting weird in in a way, especially Picard. Yes. Like the the line that always stands yeah. out to me is that is that when we already we already know that the, that season one Picard had to, had to stick up his butt. You know, yeah. but um, but they were in the they're in the the meeting and they're talking about like different options against the Ferengi. I think Tasha had suggested some kind of like let's shoot you know shoot our way out kind of solution, and Picard Picard was like uh, impractical and provocative. Like in a very very weird delivery. Like you could tell. I think the idea was that he snapped at her and then like you know tempered his words a little bit. But but just a very very oddly oddly written and oddly acted episode. I would uh, – yes, thank you. I'm happy you brought up the acting because some people would immediately want to go to the Ferengi, but I actually want to look at the main crew. Looking at like Riker and some of the others when they were on uh, the planet, it was super off. Now, I'm assuming it was a thing where you know they were just like, we have to get this done in like one to two takes. We're not fucking going to you know sit here uh, and, and do this for a while. But I don't know. There's something about Riker in that scene, and I believe um, – some other – I'm trying to think of who else as well. And there was definitely a huge issue with – I'm trying to think. It wasn't Data. It might have been um, – actually, I didn't even notice that Worf was there. Oh, uh, the Forge. There was just something about all of them that was just really odd in that one scene, as if they okay, all so were I'm... sitting around like, we don't like this. Yeah, I think I said I think the right is that the the writing was the, and characterization were still new and they were having an especially off day. But I and yes. I think they were trying to it felt like they were trying to play the or or at least not to play but to write the characters very broadly. Um and and LaForge at this point is kind of a, one of the one of the younger members of the senior staff. But they they take him down. He goes down to engineering, which is like I said, this is a, a first our first taste of him being chief engineer. But he goes down there, and there was another weird scene where he's like, "Yeah, we come back fighting, woo wee!" Like like very acting very like overly peppy. Like maybe he did a couple lines in the bathroom or something. But um, yeah, that was weird. And I think I I, I, I couldn't help but feeling that they were trying to dial up everybody's what they felt were people's established characterization to eleven. I love and how you said it was, he did a couple lines in the bathroom potentially only because of the fact that it makes me think of when he's like, wait, I can understand what I'm seeing now. There's energy <laughs> everywhere. Now it's just funny in that context. The crystals I, you are know, <laughs> I feel like they wrote him that way because for some reason they were like, well, we don't have Wesley doing anything in this episode. By the way, how funny is it? Like, I feel like this is like some weird prophecy where it's like, well, Wesley was barely in this episode, and it was horrible. So you know what that means? No, Gene, no. <laughs> All the yeah. Well, Wesley was mentioned but did not appear. Uh, they were just like, yeah, should I give him a sedative? And Picard's like, no, let him suffer. <laughs> yeah, basically, like Jesus Christ, Picard, fuck him. Uh, so, the Ferengi. What don't you like about the Ferengi? Because I have some interesting takes. I, I'm gonna have some weird takes on the Ferengi. Now, this isn't even like I said. This isn't even the Ferengi as, the, as they'll be fully realized later on, especially on DS9. But as far as the way that they're portrayed here, mm. I don't know. Like they just they there didn't seem to be a lot of for all the build up to it because I know that like I said in Farpoint they had said that they that they eat their business associates. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I I just as as they're portrayed here, they were just goofy. There was no real real menace from them. They were too they were too silly to be to be threatening. And I know you can do silly silly and threatening and have it actually read. You. 
but yeah, yeah, or Q, or like, or like the Joker and stuff like that, like, like with with a sort of like very flamboyant way about it, but they're still yes. they're still menacing. But I didn't yes. get any of that from them. They didn't seem like a legitimate threat. They they were played. Their mannerisms were played very uh, goofy. And actually, it's funny you mentioned Power Rangers because it almost seemed like like weird, like putty patrol sort of antics, like Thank the way they you. jumped Thank jumped you. around and that... swooped and ducked and twirled their arms. Yes, they're not monsters of the week. They're basically henchmen. That's the problem that I have with them only because of how they were built up and how they were trying to be pushed. If they were trying to be pushed as, like, just some weirdos at the far ends of the galaxy, you nailed it. You fucking nailed it. You were weird. You were quirky a bit. You know what it is, too? I don't know why. I guess it's because they wanted to, obviously, in some respects, in, 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 in ways that people definitely had caught on by that. They didn't want to, like, give them a red shirt or someone who would easily be like, wait, I've never seen that person before. Oh, and now they're dead. But you kind of need that person because you're not going to kill off Riker, Worf, Data, or, um, or Forge, but you got to give them someone that the Ferengi could be like, yes, we will eat that one. And you will learn. Even if yeah. he says, what, what, it, you know, yeah. Even if he says human, human will learn. We feast tonight, and then eats the eats him. He just straight up eats Worf. Well, that that's usually what Worf, <laughs> Worf is there for. Is Worf is supposed to be the, 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 the toughest guy on the ship, and then oh, his role dude. is basically to get his to get his ass kicked every week to show how powerful the new threat is. But he, but he was, but he held his own. Like I was happy to see Worf fight. Like you have him sitting on the ship, and he's like, "I'm the strongest person here." And it's like, "Yeah, but you're never really going to show it." So I love that in this episode, he's like, "Oh, we're going to fight." <laughs> Worf, I'm basically you're fighting smiling. little little, yeah. little uh, monkey monkey people. But okay. But he was happy about it though. Like I feel like he was like somewhere. He was like, "Nice, <laughs> we're going to fight today." Um, but no, but my problem with them, not only – because it's really mostly because of how they were built up. Also, just a side note, there was a leak of the unfinished makeup without the teeth, and I think maybe some other stuff was unfinished as well. And because of that leak, it was before the episode, people understandably were like, oh, this sucks, yada, yada. And some of the makeup staff were really upset because they're like, oh, come on, guys. Like, if you're going to get leaked, at least get leaked the full thing. Right, and I think that also might have soured people on this because I don't know when it was leaked, if it was around the pilot, before the pilot. But you know, you hear these rumors. Obviously, the fan community is still large at the time. No internet, but doesn't mean that it doesn't exist um, in magazines and and stuff like that. And of course, you know, in, in general social circles. Uh, so. Yeah, when you have people talking about this, and then it's like, oh, I'm assuming at the time when it was leaked, it was it was around, like the idea of them being the big villain was there. So yeah, they look goofy, even I'm um, even now with everything finalized, and even that I feel like even with their look being goofy, right? You just have to have some type of direction, like guys, stand up straight. Even if the acting is iffy, I don't care. That's any show like this is going to have a little bit of iffy acting every now and again. I don't care about that. But you tell him, stand up straight. Don't don't crouch like you're Igor. Like you don't like you don't call it Frankenstein's monster. No, Igor, Frankenstein's monster. The true one all along who was the big bad was Igor. It's like no, that's Doctor Frankenstein. Like that's the asshole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And plus the thing is so, that my my issue is that it's what's that? No, I'm just saying like it's just. You you put them in those outfits too, but either way, you go on. I'll rent some more after. I was going to say, plus the other issue besides the fact that they're just ridiculous, the, the way that they're portrayed is ridiculous. The fact that they're that they're primarily interested in profit doesn't make them very threatening because they're they're greedy. They can basically be bought off, and that's why that's why you got a much more credible threat in the Borg and in the Dominion, and and you know and other adversaries like that because they're not interested in just like you know material things um so that kind of that kind of dampens them as a villain yeah i mean i think it could work if you show them in the right environment so it's kind of we although interestingly enough they said the most interesting thing about them that i think really should have been stated when you had real people who look at like africa uh, look african-american in code of honor they were like oh yes in some ways we are more technologically advanced than them but in some ways they're even more technologically uh, technology advanced than us and so when you say that, it's like, okay, yes, some people have, you know, like some people are 
it just it's there's a diff, like you can say that about a different society. Like yes, we both have our flaws, our faults, but we also have our strengths. That's different, I think, than saying, especially when you're talking about alien races. Then the last episode, Code of Honor, where again, no one had makeup like that. So you're just kind of left there, and it's just very like we've talked about this already. So I don't I don't want to get into it too much, but it was really bad. So. In this case, at least they had the, where, the, the, the foresight or the wherewithal to be like, you know what, let's make sure that we don't make ourselves seem like the assholes, you know? Like, we're like not just as yeah. like this cool, like, we're coming in here, we have all the tech, we're the best. It's like, no, especially because you're trying to make them a threat in this episode. Um, yeah. so, so it's meant to be like an arms yeah. race. So they're, they're like neck and neck yes. technologically, I think, was the, the intended message. Yes. Uh, because, again, very Cold War-esque. Um, also something, like I mentioned uh, just a second ago, what they were wearing. I think it's just something that, I don't know, I just feel as if if you, I know it's going to sound really, this probably sounds dumb, but please hear me out. You put them in suits, you have them stand up straight, you have them try to be more, I guess, dignified, if you will, because you're making them the biggest threat. This isn't supposed to be a monster of the week situation. They are supposed to be the next biggest threat. So, and to some people, so what you're saying is menacing, the need to get their shit together. <laughs> yes. What I'm saying is that, like, you – and if not suits, like, suit-like alien-looking something. Like, so you, you make something up that looks – resembles an Earth suit. And I only say this because, you know, you, you look at them and it's like, oh, these are the most threatening people because all they care about is profit. So they'll sell you – and you're, they'll sell you and your entire family just to make a quick buck. This is awful. They are awful. But then they're walking around like, well, human, you yeah. look like you could make us a profit. And it's like, um, yeah. okay. Like if they walked around like, ah, human, you look like you could make us a profit. And then they actually had other Ferengi who were lower than them. That like a, a really bad shitty system in place where some of those other Ferengi, like one stands up straight in the suit. The other two are the ones who are like, yes, come with us. Come with us. We're putting you in jail. We're, I think the, we're, idea, we're bringing, the yeah. idea, the idea such as it played, it seemed like they were going for almost like, like goblins. Like they were going yeah, for, but, for something kind of feral and, and th- feral and thieving rather than like, you know, we're, we're you know, profiteers that were that were kind of a, of a more like you know aristocratic sort of setup they were i think they were meant to be you know like like um like raiders like savage feral uh sort yeah, of uh, just, characters with their fur with their yeah. fur vests and things like that i would just argue that one is more threatening than the other sure sure i mean yeah I mean, I, and i would say that die in the wool capitalists are a lot more threatening than like you know go- goblins also, because there were only three of them, and I get that that's just all you could afford at the time. Like, you can't do copy-paste CGI like nowadays. I get it, right? But you only have three of them. So that also, even though I love Data, you know, they appear to be stronger than they, poof, hits Riker. Yeah, that, I, that, that made other, me laugh. That was the other bit, not, not, not to digress too much, but that, that was also a weird thing. Is they, they had like a, like a take. There was like a comedy take with that. I don't. I don't remember mm-hmm. what it's called, but basically, like it's when it's like somebody the camera somebody gets hit and the camera cuts away or whatever it was. Like, but it was. I it was, like it that. Was a very like there was a very like yeah it was, it was like a, goo, a goofy sort of uh, mm-hmm. comedic comedic take type thing. And that, even that direction is like this is this this feels feels out of place for an episode of Star Trek. Yeah, I mean, and again, I don't think it would be the worst. I, I, I just think that it's because of, again, I sound like a broken record, it's because of where they were trying to be placed. So, like, when they're trying to be placed in a certain way, either you have to get a lot of them, like a lot of extras, although the problem is the makeup is so intense that you can't get that many extras, potentially. That's but you can't too, just have... Yeah. The Ferengi makeups that now, and just just a tiny bit of a of a, of a still relevant uh, uh, side side note there is that one of the Ferengi hmm. in the landing party, and the Ferengi landing party was played by Armin Shimmerman, who most notably would go on to play Quark on uh, Deep Space Nine, and he actually had a major role in in sort of reinventing the Ferengi in in, in their subsequent appearances on, on Deep Space Nine. It wasn't the main guy who played the Ferengi. The main Ferengi? I thought he's the one who went on to be more Ferengi. Although no, I thought they was, brought all was, three think, of them back. It was the guy that it was the guy that taught, that had the the most lines. It wasn't the captain. It wasn't Tar. 
It was um, oh I oh right yeah Mur- Murdoch Mordock I think Mordock was his name. It was, he was he was he wasn't the captain of the Ferengi vessel, but he was the guy that probably had the most to say. Yeah. Uh, and had the most lines, so he 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 can be credited with really salvaging the the, the Ferengi. But um, I think part of the and and he can attest that the Ferengi makeup took a long time to do. You know, so he oh, had no, to do it every, it every day to. for uh, for Deep yeah. Space Nine. So that's probably why they didn't. They only had a, a limited you know limited amount of of, uh, of Ferengi actors. But yeah, but that also makes it worse. Like unless you have like an intelligence where it's like, oh good, we don't have to, we just have to pay someone to do a voice. Unless you have an intelligence. Then you're like, oh no, this this is an evil race, and they're all here. They're all like, you know, it's gonna sell us, and it's terrible. How how many of them are there? There are like three. Oh, yeah, there's so three. Yes, there's three. To... We're going to be overrun. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't care who, what alien species you're talking about. If there's only three of them, eh, like maybe the aliens that were in um. Uh, oh, I don't want to spoil. Uh, no, because in my head I'm like, well, no, is it a spoiler? There's a movie that I'm, that I'm thinking of, a specific movie, not Xenomorphs, something different. That I mean, heck, even three Xenomorphs, yeah, I would not be I – w- I wouldn't be happy about that. But uh, maybe you need like at least three Predators. But I, um, I, I just feel as if – and just looking at the way that they're acting, because I have the episode playing on in the background. Again, just like who did not – how many people didn't tell them? Like the director. I, I look, I, now I'm going to put a little bit of blame on the director. Unless the direct, unless this is his direction and he was actually happy with this, that's fair. But someone needed to talk to that director or the director, if this wasn't his what he wanted, he'd talk to them and be like, yeah, don't just – like whenever there's issues, like, like uh, they, when they were uh, holding their ears, right? They look like it was like, yeah, we are being foiled. Like nothing about them seems menacing. It's just so odd. Even while I like the whips and the effect on the whips, that also does not make them look menacing. I no, don't. And, and actually, this is the. I think this is the last time until until like Enterprise that we see a Ferengi use the the, the laser whips. Though I think they don't, uh, they don't make a, another appearance on the on the sucks. series. But because they're actually kind of cool. I, I, plus, but yeah, they were, those were those were kind of neat. Um, the only thing, the only thing is, is that like they were they at this point you'll notice that they that they're more militaristic. Like they were trying to portray the Ferengi as, as warlike in their first couple appearances, and then basically I would say around around season three of TNG is when they started to kind of they they accepted that they weren't really the legitimate threat, so they kind of toned them down to comic relief. But yeah, they they they're portrayed as much more like the military aspect. Is much more played up in uh, in in this episode and 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 then the couple that follow. Whereas in later appearances, you don't really hear much about the Frankie military at all. Yeah, you and know, I gotta they're, they're, say, they're, they're, look, I I gotta say, right? I super duper appreciate them understanding that and working along, like realizing, okay, fandom man says this. We hear what you guys are saying. Let's change course, because like. When it went, the thing is, the reason why I like it so much is when no one is getting like hurt, like when it's not about someone losing their job over some stupid bullshit, you know, where people are like, no, 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 no you don't understand. She doesn't deserve the right to be on the set because, like, none of this bullshit, you know, when it's just the fact that, hey, guys, you're trying to push these people as main villains, just not cutting it. You got to change course. I'm so, because, like, I feel like certain creators, if they're really steadfast on something and, and a bit too stubborn, They'd be like, no, they are the main villains. Too fucking bad. So I'm yeah, happy. So rather that, than double down, yeah. they, rather than double down, they knew they knew when to cut and run. So they thank uh, God, you know, to to stack two cliches right on top of each other. But yeah, so there, there's there's one or two more attempts to kind of uh, play them as serious serious villains, but they definitely tone it down. This is this is this is really the the the. Aliens that, that you see in this episode are really hardly resemble the, the Ferengi as they appear later. So yeah, you can almost honestly, treat them as a, as a bad dream and just move on. <laughs> yeah, honestly, though, what I would have done if I was in their position, I would have literally replaced the three actors the second time around. And you'd have maybe someone like Picard be like, but you're also the Ferengi? And they're like, oh, yeah, no, those three guys were fucking team rocketing it over there. Yeah, they're not 
they're 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 Ferengi, but they're kind of doing us a disservice in terms of how yeah, vicious it, we are. That that particular crew was very was very strange. They had a very weird yeah, way that's of doing what, things. That's what I would have done. And then if I wanted to chill things over every now and again, I'd bring them back that th- those three actors to play those three Ferengi. Cuz like, like you have I feel house. like Yes, I feel like you have – I don't know that reference. I'm sorry, I don't understand that reference, but I'm assuming it's a funny one. Uh, but no, but I would have brought them back because I don't think you have to erase these three Ferengi from existence. But And you could also make them – make like the whole race have more depth by having some that are very, very serious and like, oh, those are the threatening Ferengi, and then have these three goofs. Like there's nothing I, – I don't think these three goofs have to ruin it, but if you try to bring them back, I don't know like what the other appearances were before they started going for a more comedic take. But if you try to keep the same characteristics, I don't care who it is. It's going to look funny and goofy. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, because, I, I mean, I wanna, that's not really the fault of yeah. the actors. Nobody can – you know, and that's why a lot of them, they, they realize that rather than – okay, rather than rather – than, um, you know, where they're trying to play to play to the strengths of the of the uh, of the race. You know, so yeah. rather than just scrap them as just oh, this is a fail experiment, it didn't work. Let's just go back to the drawing board. They said, okay, you know what? We went to the trouble of designing these characters. Let's retool them a bit. And honestly, they they, they work better as like the the, the comic release relief, relief like nuisance. No, no, uh, they do. Threat. They do. But I but I do think that. If there was a little bit more direction, look, I'm not saying we would have gotten some, you know, some award-winning performances here, but uh, the, I believe the actor that went on to become Quark, he was saying how he thought he was being serious, and he's like, I guess I was wrong, but they loved it. Like Star Trek, uh, the show, like they loved what I was doing, but I was not being as serious as I thought I was being. I guess it was just bad acting. So like you want to say it's bad acting because even he agreed, but like it's still fun. Like I thought that it's fun in its own way, but then when you hear all the hype, you're like, oh, oh no. Like if you had just watched this out of context, I don't think you would have hated the Ferengi, I think. But once you have the context of the pilot, all of the hype surrounding them, and you don't – and thankfully I do know of the Borg, but if I didn't, I'd be like, oh, God, uh-oh. Also, I want to talk about some interesting trivia. Did you know this is one of like the worst uh, episodes ratings-wise? I believe it. But you know what's interesting, though? I believe it. So I want to ask you something, John. Do you know how rate, I, you know how ratings work in the sense that Nielsen and all that stuff? But there's one misconception. I don't know if you're aware of it with ratings. And this is just some of it is my opinion. Some of it is just stuff you can see over time, depending on what show you're looking at. One of the biggest misconceptions about ratings is, oh, that episode had low ratings, so it sucked. The reason why is because how would people know that it sucked if they didn't watch it? Exactly, exactly. So things can be things can be often watched, but critically critically panned and things can also be critically 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 praised and Mm -hmm. have have you know just crap ratings right but what i mean is this though i'm thinking it's not because some people might say oh this of course this episode had terrible ratings because it sucked but again how did people know that it sucked if it had like this is watching it live you're not having people live tweet this at the time to then people be like oh i won't tune in no, the problem is is that the first three, the first few episodes were that iffy to Star Trek fans and the general public that this definitely, I mean, this didn't help, but yeah, it was that piss poor, especially after Code of Honor. I have a feeling that a fair amount of Star Trek fans were like, um, or even the general public, because remember, this is the 80s. We're like, no, we're, we're good. We're, we're good. So it's, yeah, it's so, yeah, funny. That, a lot it was of a lukewarm, the, lukewarm reception from the beginning. Yeah, a lot of the, the the people that panned this, from what I've heard, actually saw it on a rerun towards the later end of the series. I'm sure probably to try to build up the Ferengi for their return later on in the series uh, season. I'm assuming it was during they appeared again during season one. Yeah, they made one more appearance during season one. Didn't see much of him for a while, and then they turned up again toward the end of season two, which was really the last time that they tried to make them like a, a, a scary, yeah, ferocious military yeah. threat. Yeah. 
So again, I'm assuming because uh, you know, again, you hear that oh, most people who not most, but many people who criticized this criticized it when seeing it as a rerun. I'm assuming they re- they reran it maybe like an either the day before, the hour before, double power hour. Get your double dose of Ferengi. Um, oh, <laughs> apparently their ship was supposed to be based off of like a, a horseshoe, crab, horseshoe crab. But when I but when I saw the ship, I was like, that is a mushroom, like. Yeah, I was yeah. so confused. Or an, earwig, or an earwig, I always thought of. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Oh, and also just having this this uh, was the portal. I think portal's a great name, but I see no reason for portal needing to exist. Like as a character, like well, I know that. Well, then who's controlling it? I don't know. The planet has some force field or something. If we use our ships together, we could burst through it. Haha, ha, we work together. That's great. I don't know why they needed to add some brand new random person who's just like, wait a minute, hold on. I've been asleep, but this Sun Tzu guy sounds awesome. The Sun Tzu sounds great. You guys are awesome. Yeah. And, uh, they, hey, want to see some? Want to see some staff tricks? Kind yeah. And then the makeup was just odd. Not the, you know what? I'm sorry. No, not the makeup. The makeup mixed with well, he, the hair. He looks like Emperor Pal. He looks like Emperor Palpatine. Al, uh, Palpatine. Palpatine swinging a uh, halberd around. He looks like the first and the third Doctor just caught in between regenerations. <laughs> it's just but yeah, weird. And, and I think that was kind of a cool. That was kind of an interesting idea. Again, a little bit, a little bit TOS, but the fact that there was a guy that had been, you know, asleep for a long time, and he was the the uh, higher power that had, had, you know, basically pitted the two of them against each other. Um, I mean, that, that wasn't, that wasn't terribly, you know, bothersome to me. I thought that was, you know, it was, it was cheesy. And the fact is that one part you can definitely tell where he swings the, the staff at Riker's head uh, that they just sped the footage up to make it look like he was going really fast. And I, that always mm-hmm. cracks me up when they do that. It reminds me of the yeah. Tuscan Raiders in Star Wars where they would loop the footage. Evil Dead did something similar as well. Uh, my my thing is this, right? I don't. It's not that it's a bad idea. I just don't see why it needed to happen here. It just seemed irrelevant here. Like yeah. the Ferengi well, are supposed another, to be the know, threat. Like yeah, so, why in the, the Ferengi... episode that introduces them would you have a, would you have a power that's even higher than them? You know, making them yeah. just as powerless as the, the the our crew was. So yeah, exactly. a little, little bit of another odd choice in that case, but. Yeah, that, yeah. that really, like I said, by then, by then I was, and and then what what kind of what kind of got to me? Not not so much the idea of portal. I mean, that sounds fine, but the the sort of smarmy, very Captain Kirk way that Riker was like, oh, don't destroy them. You know, they'll they'll learn someday. We were we were just like that. That like sort of condescending compassion that I, I feel mean, like that kind of characterizes kind of season one. Yeah, that kind of happened last episode too. The difference is something about Picard, or at least with um, something about Patrick Stewart's performance, didn't sound snarky when he said it. He's like, I just maybe just because of the I don't know because he's a stage actor. He was just like, they must learn and they will learn, just like we learned. And in this one, Riker's just like, yeah, they'll probably get it eventually. Fucking nerds. Yeah, well, that's that's Picard. Picard's persona versus Rikers. Picard that comes across as like fatherly and wise and, and Rikers more of a smarmy sort of, uh, you know, uh, well, eh, let him evolve. They'll learn just like we did. But, but again, keep in mind that this is early on when they were really trying to sell Riker as like a Kirk figure. Like, you know, because we, we have a, we have a more, a more, you know, wise and, and stolid man in command that the, 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 you know, person in the first officer role gets to be the, the space cowboy. So, you know, it all, it all tracks. But again, yeah, that, that, that kind of struck That's me. That's so weird. Of... I've never gotten any Kirk vibes from from um, a Riker at all in any of these episodes. Literally zero Kirk vibes whatsoever. Like, I, I maybe it's, it's just it's... Be, I don't know. There's just something about him that just doesn't really make me think Kirk. Maybe it's because I'm picturing him with a beard all the time. I don't know. There's just something about him that I'm just like, no, Kirk was a different kind of, I don't know. But, like, I feel like it's funny. I don't know. Maybe I'm just exaggerating here. But when I see Riker and Riker's like, we'll fight you if we have to, Kirk would just be like, you looking at me funny, boy? Hmm? Yeah. What? Yeah. what? He's, he's, we, not, he's kind yo, of Kirk you, you, in that regard. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of Kirk-like. He's not really – 
<laughs> yeah, Kirk Light, exactly. He's uh, he's Kirk, but he just can't connect to the television. He's much smaller. The Joy Cons are connected. He's that kind of Kirk. Have you heard about that news that just dropped around the time we're recording this? Uh, if you don't know what that is, the the Switch Light. Oh, I'll no, text I heard you about, about the Switch no, Light. I did. I yes. did see. I did see an ad for it, but yeah, no, I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm aware. <laughs> Yes, okay, good. Um, but no, but seriously though, uh yeah, when you look at um when you look at Riker, I don't know, just compared to Kirk, like Kirk, like the Ferengi would be like, "You look, you are threatening us." And Kirk's like, "I am." Yeah, fucking legit. <laughs> uh, excuse me, human. You want to go? Hmm? Hmm? Punches the th- another Ferengi randomly. I did that to him. I'll do it to you too. Hmm? Well, you would, you would uh, drop we're kick good. him and then two-handed hammer punch him in the back. <laughs> yeah. Kirk Kirk makes a phone call. He's just like, yeah, I need some backup. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's cool. I'll wait. They're like, who are you? It's the fucking dinosaur, the fucking Godzilla. He's like, this is my friend. Like, he just calls in backup. Fr- Him, Spock, and then the fucking Godzilla character all just start fighting the three Ferengi. Like, I just feel like he's very, very antagonistic. So I see none of that in Riker. I see a, a, a kind of kindness in a way, really. So. Yeah, you know, and and again, it's 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 a broadly drawn sort of at this point, like I said, kind of pastiche of Kirk they're going yeah. for. Now remember that that uh, Riker is kind of based on. In, I don't know if you've seen Star Trek the Motion Picture, but originally they they sort of retooled uh, the characters of of Commander Decker and uh, Ilea to be. They were kind of recycled that for for uh, Riker and Troy. So Interesting. And, and he was, you know, so that 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 there's a little bit of that too. I don't know if you watched the Motion Picture yet. Um, no. it's or may very, I have very passing, slow. Maybe. I would drink a lot of coffee before you watch it because it is rather uh, slow pace. It is, it is, as we call it, the motionless picture, but you know, still worth checking out. But, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so that's Jesus. as far as, especially, especially as far as, um, season one was concerned, you know, there was a lot of that, you know, recycled character in, in Riker before they, before he kind of hit his, you know, hit his stride. Yeah. I I feel like this is one of the times, like, watching these few episodes, where I'd understand complete fan outrage on the Internet. Like, if the Internet was what it was today, this show would have been torn apart. You know, I'm never watching Star Trek, and then it's like, 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 like re, redo the episode. We want a remake of The, of the Last Outpost. <laughs> Well, you know what it is? I would think it's frustrating. Well, yeah, people could say that. But I think it would be frustrating. Uh, just And you know, some of you guys can criticize me for this. I'm just saying what I see online. It would be really frustrating because, like, I would be, I would be watching uh, the show, right? And I'd be like, these fucking Ferengi. And yet somehow you'd see people online being like, how could he be the engineer? Come on. Really? And it's like, holy fucking shit. Guys. Ferengi, and they'd be like, no, no. How about we have less force diversity and maybe he could see a bit? And I'm like, oh, God, guys, the Ferengi, please. Can we we'll, focus we'll, we'll on the shit? He'll only, he'll only have an eye patch. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, can we just focus on the shit? Because, like, so far, I mean, I, I keep on saying this, and I feel like it's just a running joke at this point. How the fuck did this not get canceled? Yeah, it's there, there, by, there, but by the grace of God, goes this uh, this show. So I think the, the name brand recognition of it being Star Trek probably had a, at least a little bit to do with it. And I will say honestly, like I said we, we haven't gotten there yet, but the, it does pick up. And in, in fact, the oh, very, this, this very next, the next, the next episode is already going to show slow signs of an improvement. So yeah, and but th- you could also say the same for a lot of a lot of shows in their first seasons. Uh, you know, definitely. And, and, uh, you know, so and especially Star Trek. I know that the, the the general rule is that it doesn't really hit the, you know, doesn't really hit its stride until the third the third season. And you know, that whether that's true for every series is debatable. But um, yeah, no, so I mean, it, it, you're not you, wrong. You, it's just it's just crazy to think about. You know, we're we're a few episodes in, and I guess I would argue maybe the pilot was the best? Question mark. But yeah, they're really and, and and it's the it's the pilots that they put their best you know try to put their best foot forward. But yeah, we haven't yeah. got we haven't had a genuinely good episode yet. And I said Farpoint was the closest thing to it by being like okay, but um, yeah, it, it hasn't really we, the show hasn't even begun to get to get good yet. Um, and you're probably saying is that wow we've had we've had like three three relatively weak episodes in a row. What's going on? 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting because, like, so, like, Code of Honor, I think the end scene was great. But, again, just portrayal of African Americans, I'm assuming that might be one of the reasons why some people, a fair amount of people tuned out for this next episode. Because they were like, well, I didn't like that one. Why the fuck am I going to watch this next one? Uh, we have the weak Ferengi who are trying to be – again, if the Ferengi weren't trying to be built the way they were trying to be built – I don't think the Ferengi are terrible. I just think that then the problems with acting fall upon uh, Riker's actor and a few other people as well, just outside the ship. And then again, the characters just seem a bit off compared to what we've, we've seen over the last few episodes. But if the Ferengi aren't meant to be the baddest of all bads, I, I just think it's a standard episode, really. I like their design, actually. I just think that, again, if they're meant to be menacing, doesn't work. Right, but you know you have yeah. to put you have to have them be a bit more serious, have a bit more finesse, uh, maybe more if if not in a suit, just something that resembles a mobster, perhaps, just a bit more of like a hey, you know, Ferengi brother, take care of him, take take him out back behind the crystal, do what you got to do. You haven't eaten today. You deserve it, buddy. Right? You don't even invite me. You don't even invite me in for a rack to Gino. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, you come to me on the day of my daughter's selling of someone else. Jesus Christ, you guys celebrate that? Um, Excuse me, the Ferengi birthday, the, the Ferengi uh, ceremony is called the, uh, the Lobening. <laughs> oh, God. I don't even want to know if but, that's uh, real. Look, I'm just saying that uh, this is an episode that even Jonathan Frakes couldn't save, and it's really sad. Yeah, I know, there was there, there was plenty of plenty of talent in the room, but yeah, it was. Uh, um, and really, like I said, the, the like the discipline on the on the bridge was very strange. Like I think like like uh, Data was whispering side comments to to LaForge while while the captain was talking to the Ferengi uh, leader, and um, yeah, and the whole like thing with the finger the finger trap, which really was just to set up the the brick joke at the end where they get to which that which speaking of speaking of uh riffing off of TOS that was directly know. out of the trouble with Trivia. Yes. <laughs> yes, no, I that's so that's what's so funny. I was looking up some some making of stuff for this episode, uh just like, you know, reading some stuff on Wikipedia and it was so funny cuz I saw that and Double. I was like try to step out of TOS's shadow, huh? Um yeah. So look, so it's just like a joke. I, yeah. I got to admit, I don't think the finger trap thing was the worst because, like, so there are certain data-isms that I understand. So the finger trap thing, I get. My problem was, with, like you said, when he talks over Picard, it's like, isn't your protocol to shut the hell up when the captain is speaking? Yeah, like, or, but, you know, like, it could also be, if we're, being, if we're being charitable, you know, so that if he's a robot hmm. and he's still learning human human interaction and human mannerisms, which he went to Starfleet Academy, so she, he should be, you know, he's had enough exposure well, to her, something like that. But yes. he doesn't read social cues, though. Well, but I don't think that's a social cue. That's like a protocol thing. Like, Catherine speaking, right. therefore, we, we are silent. Like, that's like a command prompt thing. You know, like, not like, oh, if Captain is talking, like, in other words, if Captain is talking to Beverly, and, like, they're really, they're really talking, Data approaches them, that's a social cue. And it's like, sir, I have to tell you about this problem that's currently happening. Not now, Data, trying to um, seal the deal. What deal, sir? Oh, for fuck's sakes, Data. So, like, that's what I mean. What I thought you were talking about, though, was because they got into that argument about the, uh, the flag. Which was kind of just like a side conversation, and Data wouldn't wouldn't uh, drop it. <laughs> just like a, you know. So and and also that's the other the other thing to notice is that this is I don't know if it's the first time I think uh, they they kind of went into this in Code of Honor with the when when Data called French an obscure language, but they were also trying to do a similar thing with Picard being French that they did with Chekhov being Russian, where it was like oh, he had a lot of pride in his in his heritage and and. Uh, you know, became defensive at any at any perceived uh, insult to it. That's another early season one thing that they kind of just quietly dropped. You know, yeah. he's not a. They, they made they made Picard le, you know less touchy about his uh, le, less proud and also less touchy about about his his background. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's just weird when most of them look humanoid, and you can argue, no, they, yeah, they're all from Earth, but like. I don't know. Not that France wouldn't exist in the year that they're in, but again, it just seems like they're all 
pretty chill on the Enterprise, and that's kind of what is confusing. Like, they're supposed to be chill about themselves and who they are and who they were and their, you know, where they're from, unless you're Worf. But that's a different story altogether. But, like, people are usually chill about that. Because of where they are in the in the uh, in the timeline now, you know, just how everything has evolved, and it's usually other alien races that they meet that are like, yeah, they're a bit too proud to the point where they're probably going to kill us for giving them the side eye. Oh, another good thing about the Ferengi, and this is a good thing because uh, the way that they've kind of been memed online, I didn't know that that was the Ferengi. Now I do. Uh, females. Female. Stuff like you know, that. There's, a, there's a meme of Cork where it's like a, every time yeah. every time a guy calls a girl a female, he looks like you know he looks like this to me, which you know yeah. the the, the uh, incels should be so lucky that they look like Cork. <laughs> a looker like Cork. Oh well, I mean he has such big ears. I mean you know what that means. Um, He's got the lobster business. <laughs> I oh my god that. I want now we got to get someone on record. That's probably what Roddenberry said during the fucking production meeting. He's got the lobes for it. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Like, well, I mean, he has those big ears, so you know what that means, guys. And then that's how he started talking about Ferengi <laughs> sex positions. <laughs> it might have, might have been. Oh, well, you know what they say about big ears? Honestly, big yes. <laughs> God damn it. Oh yeah, I remember there was like some joke. I think it was like I saw this when I was a teenager. Jeff Foxworthy. I don't know if you've heard, uh, heard the joke. He was like, oh, you know, yeah. like he might he be has a big kid. hands. Well, no, no. Being before that was a, actually a big thing. Uh, he was just doing – like he was doing a little bit of that in his stand-up, but it wasn't like that blue-collar comedy tour. But when he was doing something, he was like, yeah, you know, I like this guy because he, uh, was, he was talking about it from a woman's perspective. He has big ears, big hands, big feet. It's like, well, at that point, I hope he does have a big one because he needs one because he's a goofy-looking dude. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just imagine that. Huge hands, huge feet, huge ear. Well, I hope he does. I was like, that, that's be. actually fun. I was like, that's actually funny, yeah. But anyway, uh, I never thought I never thought Star Trek The Next Generation would go to the blue-collar comedy. To- Captain uh, 12, Riker, 12, what 12 is that? Separation. Yeah. Riker, what is that? It seems to be the blue-collar comedy tour, Captain. Would you like us to go? Yeah. Well, it would be good that you learned what comedy is, Data. I think we should probably get the hell out of here. It seems that their customary yeah. greeting is get her done. Now, get what done? Wesley Who's comes her? in. Captain, Captain, I would like to go. My point wasn't proven fast enough. Let's, <laughs> let's move, Worf. Yes, Captain. <laughs> um, but still, I – no, but, but for real, though, yeah, it um, – this is a rough one. Uh, this was this was kind of a rough one. Uh, I did like the effects, even though again they kind of looked not they, but the the makeup when that close up looked weird and kind of goofy. But I will admit I did like the effect with Picard just kind of looking into the um, the the giant screen with the Ferengi on it. That was done really well. Like the giant green screen, I actually liked it. Especially, I don't know how it looked in the '80s, but looking at it now with these updated Blu-ray versions on Netflix, it definitely looks really cool. Because I thought they were just had a they just had a still shot of uh, Picard, like oh yeah, just take a still image and then erase it. No, he's looking up and down, moving around. I'm like, oh wow, it's actually pretty cool, like for the '80s on a TV budget. Okay, oh, yeah, the view screen. Yeah, they, they do they do yes. interesting things with the view screen. And I know I know that the 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 shots of Picard talking on the view screen were were I remember them being kind of uh, dynamic in this episode. Like it seemed like they they zoomed in more. Like I know that the the Ferengi captain's face was much bigger on the screen yeah. than um than it usually is. So I don't know if they were going for like, you know, this that this is us us finally getting getting a look at these uh and a look at these guys after how many rumors and and uh, but yeah, but it's to kind them. of but it's kind of funny because I feel like a certain section of the fan base who saw that I just I feel like it was just unintended laughter. Yeah, yeah, most you likely. Know? And also, also the interesting teeth. was the fact that his it was it was white behind him. There was no view of their bridge. I don't know if that was a budget Which, thing. Which. Oh, that's a fucking huge ass budget thing. How many of them are there? Let's just show the one. That's a huge budget thing. They just had that dude standing in front of like a green screen himself or like some just some lights or with a white background like, you know, lit up. Yeah, no, that was a huge budgetary thing. That's another reason why I'm like this episode just makes me feel like it was like they were really like they had an accountant 
on set. And they were like, can we, can we do this? And Kyle's just like, we cannot. <laughs> if you want to have, if you want to have a season finale, we cannot do that. <laughs> okay. Let's yeah, make exactly. it a white background right. instead. What about <laughs> making this set? No. Okay. What? No. You don't even know what, what we're going to say yet, but it's going to be a no. I, thing, well, if you, if you need a bridge set, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll reuse and redress uh, like the battle bridge or something like that. Mm. If they, if they need to, if they need an, an, a bridge set in a hurry, but, um, yeah. but that would mean they'd, ha- they'd need more actors in costumes. So they were like, fuck that. They were yeah, like, we're not yeah, doing so, any of this shit. So yeah, so it, was it, a, it was a mixed, it was a mixed bag. It was, it was probably clear from the get go that these guys weren't going to cut it as uh as the new villains, which is good because the, their their uh, falling short was the reason that we got some actually legitimately good villains later in the series. So yeah, I think that all things happen for a reason. So obviously this was a this was a good direction in a strange roundabout way. But um, but as I've said before, and I'll say it again, if Star Trek, like you, you know we, we uh, alluded to earlier in the episode, Star Trek was not in the name of this series. It might this. I, I think that it would have been a maybe a cult following for season one, and then it would have been gently canceled. Probably, uh, honestly, it wouldn't have made it to twenty four. I think it's twenty four episodes. Oh no, twenty six this season, right? Uh, somewhere around there, like twenty four to twenty six. I can't remember. Wouldn't right have now. made it there. I honest to God no. think that it would have been quietly canceled at like episode eight. I feel like Star Trek: The Next Generation will not be seen tonight, so that we can, we can show you uh, reruns of Cheers while we figure out what the hell we're doing. Yeah, right. Um, I would I would love an episode of Cheers where it's just like everything's normal, and then like, oh hey, you know our friend Worf, <laughs> and he's just at the and bar chilling with in, them. Worf, Worf comes in, and everyone applauds. Everyone in the audience, the studio audience, applauds. Kelsey Grammer is like, so we have a special person on the show today. His name is Data. Yes, it is. Nice to be here. And it's just like just data on the show with Kelsey Grammer's. He was Frasier on the show too. Yeah, he was Frasier. Um, yep. Yeah, just Frasier and data. I mean, it's funny Frasier you trying Kelsey... to. Why? It's funny you mentioned Kelsey Grammer. Dot dot dot. Oh, oh, that's that's that sounds nice. <laughs> you, oh God! You to, it's it's, it's going to be many episodes from now, but you know, keep that in mind. <laughs> Before we wrap this one up, I have two questions to ask. I have two questions to ask. One: Were there any notable celebrities like a Kelsey Grammer, like a Whoopi Goldberg, who appeared in season one, or or was everybody like, "Nah, we're just going to stay away from this until it started picking nah, up there, steam"? Yeah, there really weren't. Any, I mean, TNG didn't have a ton of like super high profile. Uh, uh, guest stars. Although the first uh, black woman in space did appear on a season six, ep- six episode, Mae Jemison, um, but mm. uh, didn't really have an all star like you know a lot of high pro- profile guests. But definitely not in season one. I mean, I'm going through, and I don't think anybody, any any A list you know or or, or yes. equivalent celebrities were in season one. Definitely not. Okay, um, so that's like I said, one. there were like, really only a handful yeah. of high high profile ones in the series, and definitely not in season one. And that starts when they like start actually gaining momentum. Uh, that's one. Yeah. Two, uh, anything on the CD that you have, anything about the script that stands out to you that kind of pops out when looking at it filmed on television? Not really. There were, there were no interesting cuts or, or any, any uh, big, big uh, notable uh, differences from the, final, from the final episode, at least, that I can, uh, that I can remember. Um, maybe there should have been. Pretty straight. Um, maybe, maybe there should have been a few. Just putting that out there. Yeah, might have done, might yeah. have done them some good. Yeah, uh, and also I would like to note I don't have a problem with them using the set. It might have seemed like I had a problem with it. I only did when they first appeared because there's no there's nothing in the sky, and it's like wow, it literally looks like Riker just stepped on the set of an episode of TOS. But then when he steps onto the quote unquote cliff, and then there's like the weird effects in the sky, like the, to mimic clouds. I like those. I'm like, oh, good, you're showing that this is an actual fucking planet and not just a set. So, yeah, it's not like, a I have no pro- rocks. Yeah, like, I have no problems, problems with uh, sets being used. I just feel like, you know, like that. I just feel like you have to do something 
about the background, like paint some part of it to make it look like that is the sky. Unless it's like some weird like Super Sentai Power Ranger thing where it's like, no, we're in an alternate dimension. It's like, okay, that's fair. Do whatever you need to do. But even then, they'll do like some kind of camera effect or they'll do quick cuts or they'll do something to make you be like, okay, I know this is obviously a soundstage. I get it. But it does look different. Like, you put some weird lights. You put some different colors around. In this case, while they did have dressings on it, they had, you know, they had uh, the rocks and the crystals and everything. But when you got those shots of the sky, it was just like, what sky? This is clearly the most stagiest of stages. Again, it just felt like an episode of TOS, which I love TOS. But that happened in the 60s. So in my head, I'm like, look, I'm, I know we're not going to get CG here because we're in the mid-80s. But, like... You gotta do something with it. Like you're on, like in other yeah. words, you're on the ship, right? And you see outside, quote unquote. And they just did something to, you know, to the um, background behind the, or they did something with the windows, like maybe put, you know, something on the windows to make it look like when you're watching, like just behind them, standing on the on the um, the bridge when when Data gets his uh, fingers caught in the um, in the trap. You're like, yes, they're in space. Boom, I get it. Rather than just seeing like a blue background and being like, "Wow, they're in blue." Well, so it's well, the little don't stuff. Have, uh, don't they have like the star, the star curtain, which was literally like a like a thing that they cranked, they pulled, and it, and it was a curtain of uh, with stars on it would go by in the window. That I don't know, but like now that you've told me that, that makes sense. But it looks good. Like <laughs> yeah, they need it's a curtain in the shots for the observation in the observation yeah. lounge. You know, you can see the stars streaking by. Yeah, yeah, no, that's all you need. Something small. I'm not asking for anything crazy here. But, you know, so anyway, anything you want to say before we wrap this one up? Um, no, that, that's just about, uh, you know, and, and, and to, cut, to be honest, I'm, I'm having trouble coming up with a, a, witty, <laughs> a witty line to go out on. Uh, that's uh, fine. Something, for, um, something Ferengi-related, but not sexual. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, that's another thing, right. too, by the way, just their pronunciation. Like, come on. That's that's not going anywhere. That's going to be around for the rest of the franchise. You'll 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 hear a lot of that in DS9. Editing, editing. We just had a small error in recording, and now here we are. So, John, you were having some problems with some last words. What that sounds much more ominous than it should. And um, and I and and I was talking about the fact that um. You know, it's interesting that I was talking about the difference between there were, there's two shows, um, Car Ranger, the Super Sentai, and then the U.S. version became Power Rangers Turbo. Now, this is very relevant somehow. So they actually mispronounced the word Earth in Japanese. So, but also should be noted, Car Ranger, Power Rangers Turbo isn't this way, but Car Ranger is actually more of like a parody on Super Sentai. So it's kind of like an entire joke, like the five... Uh, Sentai members, Rangers, whatever you want to refer to them as, they actually get their powers, their mech and their general powers from the car constellations. And the bad guys who are trying to take over the Earth are basically just space pirate bounty hunter types that just sit around in a bar, a space bar, and shoot the shit. It's basically space cheers. And so, um, but here's the thing, John. With them mispronouncing Earth, it, when you translate it, it becomes Earth. Because instead of saying cheek you, they're like, cheek you. So imagine them, as a joke, trying to sound menacing, and they're like, we will take over the earth. So that's funny. That's the intended point. We all laugh. So when you have a situation where it's just like, we are menacing, cool man, and it's like, ah, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, it, it, mispronunciations, even though I get where the actor is probably coming from or whoever told him to do that, like, oh, you're alien, so you mispronounce it. But – Usually that just comes off as a comedic take. I mean, heck, even Data in the last episode. What was the what was the fun one that he said that we we chuckled at even in person when we saw each other recently? The, 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 the Kiddleys. The Kiddleys, including, yeah. Including the Kiddleys. Yes, exactly. Uh, stuff like that is just funny. So to have him go around and just say stuff like that, cool man and females, it's just like yeah, it's, nah, it's goofy. Yeah. Even though his opinion wasn't goofy, it's like they put them in clothes so that then it seems like you want to rip off the clothes. I was like, oh. Like, I was so happy. I'm surprised they didn't just give Yara the chance to just dropkick him. Like, I'm happy she got his hand, but it's like just just roundhouse kick. Yeah. And that was yeah, another exactly. thing, too. 
like you want to give Worf some more time, which is nice, but uh, you have Yar and a few other people just kind of like Wesley, even though I understand why some people might want Wesley gone, really just kind of phased out, haha, joke phasing, uh, phased out of this episode in a very strange way because they don't really something about the show so far. They haven't done a good job of convincing me that they're off doing better things. If that makes any sense, John? Like the actors or... or, uh... The characters. Like, in other words, the show hasn't done a good job of establishing, like, well, Wesley can't be here because he's... Like, yes, we didn't really... Yes, we, you know, they had to give him something. Oh, I see what you mean. Like, like it gives the the, the implication that they they have other things going on or, or, you know, well, sometimes they occasionally take a day off or go on vacation. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like they're stuck on that ship. Why the fuck is no one else reacting to this that you would normally see reacting to this? So, and you could argue that's something similar with TOS as well, but still, um, yeah, I feel like it is definitely something that happened here as well. Uh, love the crystals on set. That looks really cool. And you know what? There actually are certain scenes, I should note, that did have good background uh, when they were on the soundstage. It was just, I think, more of the initial shock of when R- Riker gets thrown down and there's just nothing in the background other than, like, a few, you know, cliffs and such. Anyway, you have nothing else to say. I have nothing else to say. This was not a good episode. Uh, well, it wasn't a great episode. It was a mediocre, adequate episode. If you don't tell someone who the Ferengi are, they're like, oh, that was a weird one. Kind of quirky. Okay. And I think that's really what you can take from it. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know what? If anything, it paved the way for some better stuff. You know, it did. Yep. Uh, you know, the, the, the Ferengi were much more fleshed out and, and put to much better use on Deep Space Nine. So it at least gave us... You know, uh, the the first the, the, a prelude to that, if you will. Yeah, no, that's great to think about. So either way, love you guys tuned in to another Star Trek Thursday. Should have mentioned we are doing this during our Halloween in July month, where we usually do scary, spooky things. This was the exact opposite of what I wanted. Um, damn the Ferengi. But, uh, yeah, so... We, but either way, though, we hope you guys enjoy watching some of the cool, fun, spooky stuff that we have going on on our Those Guys Play channel, our Those Guys on the radio channel, which you might be listening to this on right now, and our TG Productions YouTube channel. Also, would like to note as well that you could be listening to this through our Blog Talk Radio account, blogtalkradio.com slash those guys on the radio, or maybe you searched up Those Guys on iTunes, found us there, downloaded the episodes, and listened to them on the go. Whatever you do, happy that you do it. Thank you for helping us be us, helping keep the lights on, potentially giving to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Productions, which are a lot of cool tiers there as well. Can't go into all of them right now. And hopefully next time you hear John and I or Anthony and I talk about either Star Trek TNG or Star Trek TOS. See what happens. All right. So, John, would you like to say goodnight to the adoring fan? Good night, humans. Oh, Jesus H. Humans. Uh. <laughs>